Hey guys, it's me, Christine. It's Fragment Friday number five. I messed up last time and I thought it was number five. It was actually number four. But this one is now number five. I am going to be reading a fragment of Succubus Blues by Rochelle Mead. This is her adult series, not like Vampire Academy, which is YA. Um, this is more adult. Um, I'm on chapter three. It's not like really bad, but I guess it is. Um, the girl is like, she's a succubus. Um, a learning shape shifting demon who seduces and pleasures moral men. So we are going to read, um, I'm going to read chapter one of Succubus Blues. Statistics show that, that most morals sell their soul for five reasons. Sex, money, power, revenge, and love. In that order. I suppose I should have reassured them I was out here assisting with numero uno. But the whole situation just made me feel, well, sleazy. And coming from me, that was something. Maybe I can't emphasize anymore on these. It's been too long. When I was a virgin, people still believed swans could impregnate girls. Nearly he waited impatiently for me to overcome my resonance. He stuffed his hands into well-pressed khakis, leaning his large frame against his Lexus. I don't see what the big deal is. You don't you do this all the time. That wasn't exactly true, but we both knew what he meant. Ignoring him, I instead made a great show of studying my surroundings. Not that and not that not that that improved my mood. The suburbs always drag me down. Identical houses, perfect lawns, far too many SUVs Somewhere in the night, a dog refused to stop yapping. I don't do this, I said finally. Even I have standards. Hugh snored, expressing his opinion of my standards. Okay, if it makes you feel any better, I don't don't think of this terms of damnation. Think of it as a charity case. A charity case. Sure, he pulled out his pocket PC, looking briskly businesslike, despite the unorthodox settings. Not that I should have been surprised. He was a prof he was a professional imp, a master of getting morals to sell their soul, an expert in contract and legal loopholes that would make any lawyer wince and envy. He was also my friend and sort in sort of gave new me meanings to with friends like adage. Listen to these stats, he continued. Martin Miller, male, of course, Caucasian, non-practicing Lutheran, works over at a game store in the mall, lives in the basement here. His parents has Jesus. Told you, charity or no, it still seems so extreme. How old is he again? 34. Ew, exactly. If you were that old and hadn't gone any, you might seek desperate measures too. He glanced down at his watch. So are you going to do this or not? No doubt I was keeping Hugh from a date with some hot woman half his age. By which I meant, of course, the age Hugh looked in reality. He was pushing a century. I set my purse on the ground and gave him a warning glance. You owe me. I do, he concluded. This wasn't my usual gig. Thank goddesses. Thank goodness. Zim normally outsourced this kind of thing, but had run into some kind of scheduling problem tonight. I couldn't imagine who he normally got to do this. I started toward the house, but he stopped me. Georgina? Yeah. There's one other thing. I turned back around, not liking the tone in his voice. Yes. He sort of had a special request. I raised my eyebrow. And waited. You see, he uh, really likes the whole, like, evil thing. You know, figures if he sold his soul to the devil, so to speak, then he should lose his virginity to, I don't know, demoness or something. I swear even the dogs start bragging. You joking. Hugh didn't respond. I'm not. A no. No way am I going to. Come on, Georgina, it's nothing. A flourish, smoke and mirrors. Please, just do this for me. 
He turned wistful, conjuring hard to resist. Like I said, he was good at his job. I'm really in a tight spot. If you could help me out here, it would mean so much. I groaned, I groaned unable to refuse the pathetic look on his broad face. If anyone finds out about this, my lips are sealed. He actually had the audacity to make a sealing motion. Bending down, resigned, I unfastened the straps on my shoes. What are you doing, he asked. These are my favorite Brunum Maglavis. I don't want them absorbed when I change. Yeah, but you can just shape shift them back. They won't be the same. They will. You can make them anything you want. This is just silly. Look, I demand. Do you want me to stand out here arguing shoes, or do you want to make a man of your virgin? Huh? You flapped his mouth shut and gestured toward the house. I bet away in grass and the blades tickling my bare feet. The black patio leading the basement was open, just as Hugh had promised. I let myself in the sleeping house, hoping they didn't have a dog. Literally wondering how I'd reach the low point in my existence. Adjusting to the darkness, my eyes soon disconcerted the features of a comfortable middle-class family. Room, sofa, television, bookshelves, a stairwell rose to the left, and a hallway reared to the right. I turned down the hall, letting my appearance of shape shift as I walked. The sensation was so familiar, my second nature to me, that I didn't even need to see my exterior to know what was happening. My petite frame grew taller, the slim build still saying the same, but taking on a linear harder edge, my skin. Pale to death white, leaning no memory of its faint tan. The hair already to its mid back stayed the same length, but darkened to jet black. The fine waviness turning to straight, of course, and my breast impressive, but most serious became larger, still revealing those of the comic book heroines this guy had undoubtedly grown up with. As for an outfit, well, away went the cute Banana Republic. Slacks and blouse, thigh high boots, leather, thigh high black leather boots appeared on my leg, paired with matching halter tops and a skirt. I never could have bent over in this. Spiky wings, horns, and a whip completed the package. Oh lord, I muttered, accidentally taking in the whole effect in a small ducker mirror. I hope, I hope no, the local demoness ever found out about this. They were really quite classy. Turning from the taunting mirror, I s started down the hall of my destination. I closed a, a closed door with yellow men at work sign attached to it. I thought I could hear a faint sound of video games beeping from beyond. Through such noise, silence immediately when I knocked. A moment later, the door opened and I stood facing five foot eight guy with shoulder length, dirty blonde hair, rapidly we see on top a large hairy belly peeped out from underneath his Homer Simpson t shirt and he held a bag of potato chips in one hand. The bag dropped to the floor when he saw me. Marmel Yes, he gasped. I cracked the whip. You ready to play with me? So that was the fragment of Succubus Blues, the first in the Georgina Kincaid series by Rashawn Mead. Um so if you will expect a review on this, of course, because I really like this. And I think there's like six books in this series. Um, so I will see you guys soon. Bye, guys.